Hello brothers and sisters on the planet. Hope you're well. <clears throat> so I'm just going to do this video about um, <clears throat> you know the new world. Utopia. God's kingdom on earth and maybe a few other things. So um, I was thinking last night um, I was thinking for the first time that uh, a high population on Earth will continue, and um, it might be right that the, the people who've been to university say um, the, the world population looks to get to about 12 billion, and then sort of remain about that and not not increase any more. And because um, the reason I was thinking that is uh, three quarters of us are in spirit world. We've lived a life and died, or we lived sort of some sort of life, or, you know, a miscarriage or something, and then have been in spirit world all this time. So, seven billion people on the planet at the moment and there'll be another 21 billion in the spirit world. So lots of them are going to want to have another life. Um, so there will be a decent sized population on the earth. And talking about numbers, I just want to reiterate, as I said before, that I'm using the 144,000 from the Bible as a clue to how many souls there are in in existence, how many souls God created, how many black holes there are in the universe, God. And each one of our souls, as a complete soul, male and female part, is basically has a universe which would be in each of these black holes would be another universe, just as God's universe, the universe we're in is a black hole in God's mum and dad's universe. <laughs> anyway, so the 144,000, now they really didn't dig the, the, the zero back in those days and that's been sort of put by others plenty enough to, to, to kind of allow this sort of a 144 and then add however many zeros you like. So, and I'm saying 14.4 billion and that's everybody, that's all the souls. So that would be, you know, roughly 28, 29 billion um, half souls. So people, population. So let's say 28 because that divides nicely. <laughs> and we've got 7 billion on the earth now. So we've got a quarter of us. So anyway, so that's my argument for that there will continue to be a high population on the earth. So I, I'm feeling now that I, or I'm starting to experiment with this idea that, um, you know, most of the population won't be wiped out. And as I feel that we've turned the corner, we, we're, we're through the worst, and, we're, you know, things are going to start getting better, and we're getting close to this utopia, I'm not saying we're there yet, <laughs> not by long means, things got to change big time. So... You know, I was thinking, because I do feel that, you know, the world will return to nature and that, <clears throat> you know, nature's got to recuperate. It takes a long time, you know, a hundred years for a tree to mature fully or whatever it is a long time. So, we're, you know, the big thing is, you know, what we're going to eat, you know, so there's not going to be... McDonald's is not going to be really eating meat um, in this utopia and uh, we're just eating fruit and stuff and I think what we're going to be doing is eating a lot less now uh, uh, what's it called? Channel and Eric they did a video what's the world going to be like in 10,000 years 
and this fits in with what they said, what Eric said. We're going to be eating a lot less, we're going to be sort of getting spiritual food. Now I do a lot of meditating and quite often what will happen is I won't eat all day and I would have been meditating, maybe doing a few other bits as well. And and then I'll eat in the evening. And then um, usually I've got biscuits in the house and <laughs> ate quite a lot of them after I've eaten my dinner and, and then I'm just like, oh, flumped out. Probably diabetic, I've eaten plenty of sugar in my life. <laughs> Probably am a bit. Anyway, so going without food's great, um, and maybe what I should do sometimes is not have that evening meal anyway. So at some point we're going to be forced, basically, starve, but we will survive, we will manage, and we'll start to find food just in nature. That That is the way it's going to have to be. No utopia of robots and swanky cities and, you know, robots do all the farming and... Yeah, because, you know, why? So this is the, the big, this is the big thing. And this is, we can see it now. It's happening right now. There are not enough jobs. In Europe, it's getting to near half um, unemployment with young people. So half, of, nearly half of these people can't get a job. Where are the jobs going to come from when technology keeps taking away more jobs? And everyone seems to be depending on technology to provide all the answers. But really technology is just taking away more jobs. Now for a human being to live a life, you know, part of an essential thing we need, like we need food and shelter and warmth, but we need purpose, we need to feel important, we need, we need that. Now friendships can be enough, you know, but I can't, I, I just can't see the world going right, okay robots are going to do all the work from now on but don't worry if you haven't got a job everyone you know if 80% of the population don't have a job they'll be you know we'll just put money in your bank so you can buy food and you'll be fine I, I can't see that happening I can't see that and and I don't think 80% of the population in that sort of society where you know we do is watch videos and stuff like that and looking at our phones and kids are all just playing games and you know that it's not conducive to healthy living. This meditating is healthy. I've, if I play the computer game for a few hours, which I have done, I liked Civilization. I haven't played it for a few months, but every now and then I'll play it. And if I get on there, I'll be on there for six, seven hours. And afterwards, I feel awful. But if I've meditated for six, seven hours, it probably means I would have done some good feeling I feel awesome because so the soul is dominant so this is what I'm getting to in Utopia we're going to be living in natural surroundings and God will provide through nature what you need and I'm going to be meditating a lot it's going to be a it's going to be a sort of a, a gradual progress towards feeling. Now look, friendships. You know, if you live in a self-sustainable community, there's going to be a lot of potential for friendships there. You know, not quite what we've got now in our segregated houses and they've been designed so that we're not looking over each other and so you can stay in your private domain and... And, you know, people lived in families a lot before, but that's increasingly rarer. And so, you know, it's just going to, to, to more and more of that sort of private seclusion. 
Whereas in a community, you know, and the community shouldn't be too big because you, you know, what will happen naturally is if the community is too big, it will segregate, it will split. So about, say, 150 people, all mixed different age ranges, half male, half female. That's a, that's a good, cosy community. And obviously then you've got your neighbouring communities. And it's going to be natural, and you're not going to be eating very much. So that's good. So that lowers the pressure on how much food we've got to grow. Because basically, just let nature do its thing. And you take what nature provides. So if you get lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> but that will... Oh, I'm oh, so looking forward to it. Because the world will come become mystical and magical again. If you want to see another part of the world, you've got to go there. You've got to walk or do the instantaneous travel thing which will happen in by 2047 but you know it's going to be it's going to be awesome so there's still going to be lots of people on the world so that's a good thing and um yeah and probably live a lot longer <clears throat> So, yeah, I think that's all I was going to say for now. Okay, bye.